Honourable David Parker. Uh, as prior speakers have said, the Labor Party will be supporting uh, this bill. Uh, it, uh, it does uh, a number of things. It clarifies that the 10-year limit on storage of embryos or gametes uh, began when this Act originally came into force rather than uh, uh, at an earlier date when those gametes or, or embryos were first stored and that's necessary for practical reasons and it also clarifies some of the powers of advisory committees. There is one thing that I would just like to uh, mention arising from this debate and that's the contribution from the Maori Party and I have to say I was somewhat surprised to hear, on, hear Hone Harawira stand up and say there's a special Maori perspective here that hasn't properly been taken into account. And I do at times get a little tired of the uh, assertion that the Maori perspective under the treaty is different from that which applies to the general populace. And I think that this is a case in point. And Mr Harawira, after you made that contribution, which didn't make common sense to me, given that Maori men and women suffer from infertility problems on occasions uh, just as non-Maori uh, men and uh, women suffer infertility problems, I couldn't see the difference in principle that arose. And so it caused me to go and have a look at the paper record that we've got before us here in this parliament. Uh, now, we heard from uh, other contributions that there were public submission processes that uh, were obviously available to people in respect of this bill. And I'm sure they were faithfully recorded by the Select Committee. So I looked at the Select Committee report to see if there was any special circumstance relating to Maoridom that would mean that some special rules were necessary to protect some alternative interest in respect of Maoridom that wasn't properly catered for by the current law. What did I find? Nothing. There was not one submission that said that was some special sort of um, principle that's as articulated by the Maori Party which was uh, applicable to Maori that wasn't adequately covered by the current law. And then I thought to myself, well what is it that this law is doing that's so offensive to the Maori Party that causes them to come down and speak against this bill? And actually I looked at the uh, provisions of this bill and I considered what Hane Harawera had said and he was concerned that there be appropriate uh, recognition of different interests. What we're doing here in respect of this bill is actually tightening up the rules from the advisory committee. We're also adding the power of the advisory committee to revoke a prior approval that they've given. So that seems to me to be the, exactly the sort of thing that would be assuaging the concerns of the Maori Party. But no, the Maori Party came down with one of their at times can't, uh, repetitions of their normal uh, uh, position in these things, which there is that there has to be some sort of separate system uh, uh, to take account of their interests which cannot be uh, properly taken into account through the normal processes of the advisory committee. And given that that was the submission, I would have thought that the Maori Party might have turned up to the select committee and made that point, but they didn't do that either. So I, having heard that contribution from Hane Harawera, think that that actually, in this case, had as much substance as, as some of their rhetoric in respect of the foreshore and seabed debate, which we can see laid bare this week uh, as being largely smoke and mirrors as well, given that the uh, foreshore and seabed act doesn't change nearly as much of substance as the Maori party has previously, has previously pretended was necessary. Mr Speaker, this is a good bill. It does, uh, it does clarify that the 10-year period or the storage period, uh, the limit uh, on the period for which gametes and embryos can, store, can be stored is 10 years normally. There is a period for extensions and uh, uh, Paul, Hutchison, uh, you know, uh, Paul Hutchison for the House said why that's necessary and I agree with him uh, that there are circumstances where greater than 10 years can be appropriate where for example the person for whom the uh, gamete or the embryo is being stored uh, is, is, uh, is not yet going to have children and for, could be for a proper medical reason they might have had to have some medical intervention or they might have become infertile for a reason uh, uh, and might want to have children in the future and it is appropriate that there be some discretion to uh, enable the storage period to be longer than 10 years, but uh, uh, the general rule should be that it's 10 years, but that that 10 years should run from 
the date of the Act rather than from the date of original storage. And I also think that it is appropriate for some of the reasons that the Maori Party actually said that we, that we, uh, we make it clearer as to what the advisory committee's role is. But I do reject the idea um, that this legislation is somehow flawed because it doesn't properly take into account the interests of Maori. The interests of Maori in this uh, instance coincide with the instance, instance of non-Maori. And were that otherwise, I would have expected at least one submission to the contrary, which we did not have. Uh, with that, uh, Mr Speaker, I'm happy to close in recording once again that the Labour Party supports this bill. I call Jonathan